The Honorable Gaston Brown, Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda. Dr. Didikas Jules, Director General of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, Commissioners of the OECS, Officials of OECS Institutions headquartered in St. Lucia, Bishop Eric Camille of the New Testament Church of God, Staff of the OECS Commission, the St. Lucia Cadet Corps, Nationals of Antigua and Barbuda, resident in St. Lucia, ladies and gentlemen, good day. The OECS Commission welcomes you to this virtual flag raising ceremony to commemorate the 42nd anniversary of independence of Antigua and Barbuda. Today's celebration of this auspicious occasion is being held under the theme Embracing the Legacy, Shaping the Future. On November 1st, 1981, Antigua and Barbuda embarked on its journey as an independent nation, carefully nurturing its unique culture and heritage. With its enchanting coastal waters and awe-inspiring sunsets that graze our horizons, Antigua and Barbuda serves as a living testament to the enduring fortitude and resilience of its people. Today, as we come under the theme, Embracing the Legacy, Shaping the Future, we reflect on the remarkable journey of Antigua and Barbuda and the enduring spirit of its people that has carried this nation forward for 42 years of independence. This theme reminds us of our duty to honor the past while forging a brighter tomorrow, united in our commitment to progress and unity. Distinguished guests and participants, we now move on to the flag-raising segment of this ceremony. I call upon the officers of the St. Lucia Cadet Corps to assist with the raising of the flag of Antigua and Barbuda. This will be accompanied by the rendition of the country's national anthem. Thank you officers of the St. Lucia Cadet Corps. The Commission is deeply appreciative of your continued support. At this time, I invite Bishop Eric Camille of the New Testament Church of God to offer a prayer for the nation of Antigua and Barbuda. Shall we pray? Our eternal God and Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning on this occasion, on this day, the independence of Antigua and Barbuda, the 42nd anniversary of our nation, where we embrace the legacy and we build, O oh God, our ship on the future. We thank you for our forefathers who have laid the foundation that our present leaders can continue to build. And Lord, that they will leave something, O oh God, that our young people can continue to build. We pray for Antigua and Barbuda, a people with a mind to work, a people, O oh God, who are determined, O oh God, to continue to build on that legacy, to continue shaping a future for Antigua and Barbuda. We pray, God, for the blessings, your blessings on Antigua. As we face the challenges, O oh God, that are all around the world, that Antigua and Barbuda will continue to distinguish herself. Lord, let Antigua and Barbuda be the delight of the nations, the delight of many, that others will look at Antigua and Barbuda, O oh God, and call her the blessing of the Lord. I speak your favor over Antigua and Barbuda. I declare your blessing over Antigua and Barbuda. We lift up our nation to you, O oh God, and we pray, Lord, that you would bless our nation, my God, as we continue to go forward. 
Lord, we pray that our leaders will continue to look to you, knowing, O oh God, that wisdom, strength, and might comes from you in the name of Jesus. Bless us, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Bishop Eric Camille, the Commission is deeply appreciative of your words of wisdom and eloquence, embodying the spirit of the nation of Antigua and Barbuda. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a distinct honor to introduce Dr. Didikas Jules, the Director General of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, who will share a few words in observance of Antigua and Barbuda's 42nd anniversary of independence. Governor General of Antigua and Barbuda, His Excellency Sir Rodney Williams, Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Honorable Gaston Brown, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, the Honorable Everly Paul Chet Green, other ministers of government, commissioners of the OECS, heads of OECS institutions in St. Lucia, Pastor Eric Camille, Bishop, New Testament Church of God, staff of the OECS Commission, officers of the St. Lucia Cadet Corps, nationals of Antigua and Barbuda resident in St. Lucia, ladies and gentlemen. Today, as we gather to celebrate the 42nd anniversary of the independence of our sister nation, Antigua and Barbuda, we are reminded of the journey that we have traveled, the legacy that we embrace, and the future we are poised to shape. Antigua and Barbuda, a nation of indomitable spirit and vibrant culture, has never been just about the land and its boundaries. It has always been about its people, their dreams, their aspirations, and the legacy they leave behind. A legacy carved out of resilience, unity, and an unfaltering commitment to nation building. Embracing the legacy reminds us of the sacrifices made by our forefathers, the battles fought, and the stories that shaped our identity. It is a call to remember the soul of the nation, the very essence that makes each of its citizens Antiguan and Barbudian. This legacy, imbued with the ethos of freedom, self-determination, and community, serves as our guiding light. Your accomplishments are many, and Antigua and Barbuda has flown its flag high in the fields of sports, culture, economic initiative. Not many may know that you were global leaders in internet gaming and air transportation, with LIAD being the backbone of post-federation mobility across the Eastern Caribbean. Yet, as we honor our past, we must also recognize the call of our theme, shaping the future. If history has taught us anything, it is that we, the people, have the power to shape our destiny. Today, as we stand on the threshold of a world ever-changing and increasingly interconnected, it is imperative that we not only safeguard our legacy, but also reimagine it for the generations to come. We live in an age of unparalleled technological advancements, environmental challenges, erratic and evolving global dynamics. Our role is not just to navigate through those changes, but to shape them in a way that ensures our values remain intact and our nation continues to prosper. To the young minds and hearts here, the torchbearers of our future, remember, that the legacy we embrace today will be the history you'll teach tomorrow. Your ideas, your innovations, and your initiatives will set the course for the nation's future. In conclusion, let us all come together as one, with pride in our hearts and dreams in our eyes. Let's honor our legacy by being its faithful stewards and shape the future with determination and purpose the tapestry of your nation's story, every thread, old and new, is essential. And in that tapestry is woven all that has shaped us today, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good exalts our highest nature and its accomplishments. The bad cautions us of past failings 
and provides the reminders of what ought not to be repeated. And the ugly is testament to the pain and struggle against the worst indignity of human history that we have survived, the long groan of slavery and the largest human genocide. This is the tapestry of our resilience as a people. And this is what empowers us to shape the future. The OECS Commission extends happy 42nd Independence Day to Antigua and Barbuda. Let's continue to embrace our legacy and shape a future that generations to come will be proud of. I thank you. Thank you, Director General, for enriching this special occasion with your uplifting words. At this moment, I would like to welcome you to watch and listen to an address delivered by the Honorable Gaston Brown, Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, as he further celebrates the occasion of Antigua and Barbuda's 42nd anniversary of independence. Distinguished colleagues of the OECS Authority and your cabinets, members of parliament of the OECS, Director General and senior officials. Dear citizens of the OECS, wherever you may be, I bring you greetings on this, the 42nd anniversary of the attainment of independence of Antigua and Barbuda. I do so with a sense of pride and solidarity, but my pride and solidarity are also tempered by a sense of recommitment to the original purpose of the establishment of the OECS in June of 1981. In achieving independence, among OECS countries, Antigua and Barbuda was neither the first nor the last. Incidentally, when Antigua and Barbuda fixed its signature to the Treaty of Bastia on the 18th of June 1981, we were not yet an independent country. Our entire journey so far as an independent nation has been in the bosom of the OECS. Yet the leaders who came before us were keenly aware that in the troubling times of the 1980s, we did not want to walk alone. And if we scan the world's headlines today, we will become even more convinced that the world is burning. The world is in turmoil in a way that it has not been for decades. Make no mistake, the world today is a hostile place that ignores the interests of OECS members as small island developing states sits and threatens to envelop us in a war and in economic destabilization. Just as our region and the world began to emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic and its devastating consequences, the international community is now confronted with two major wars that are having far-reaching and very damaging repercussions that touch every country on the planet. What is worse, at present, there exists no diplomatic pathway to bring a peaceful resolution to these vicious conflicts. There is a very realistic possibility that the world stands on the brink of a major military conflagration. It is a catastrophic failure of the international system. The United Nations is paralyzed and in crisis. This begs the question, how can we ensure our survival and paddle our own canoe to make our way among the turbulence and turmoil that makes up international relations today? I say to us that just as our leaders of over 40 years ago saw the turbulence of their times and devised the mechanisms that we now call Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OACS, so must we now strengthen these mechanisms for our own survival. For in this world, we need not just to survive, but to thrive. Our people deserve, after all the injustices of our history, to emerge onto the high plane of economic development and prosperity. In my humble view, the best way we small states can secure our economic future and our economic fortunes is to strengthen our OECS mechanisms that were put in place to defend us against the buffeting winds of economic dislocation. Now that we can clearly see the emerging dangers on the horizon, I say let us accelerate the key elements of our OECS single space. Increasing the coherence and vitality of our internal market and our governance arrangements will fortify us against the day when the international trading system finally unravels. Our integration arrangements should be under constant review always seeking ways to strengthen the ties that bind. 
This is how countries and regions move forward. I say to us today that an international catastrophic shock is coming, and the best thing that we in the Oasis can do is to make sure that all our nuts and bolts are in place and screw down tightly. This means finalizing the major planks of the OECS single space and getting our best business-friendly environment in place. I'm calling for a reinvigoration of our work program within the OECS. I also call for a sense of urgency. In closing, it is said that if you want to walk fast, walk alone. But if you want to walk far, walk with others. We in Antigua and Barbuda choose to walk with our brothers and sisters in the OECS, and we intend for all of us to go far. I thank you. Thank you, the Honorable Gaston Brown, for your inspiring address and your steadfast devotion to the nation of Antigua and Barbuda. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, nationals of Antigua and Barbuda, we have come to the end of the Commission's virtual flag raising ceremony to commemorate the 42nd anniversary of independence of Antigua and Barbuda. I thank you all for your participation today, in particular the Director General of the OECS, Commissioners of the OECS, officials of OECS institutions headquartered in St. Lucia, the staff of the OECS Commission, and nationals of Antigua and Barbuda resident in St. Lucia. I especially thank the Honorable Gaston Brown, the Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, the St. Lucia Cadet Corps, and Bishop Eric Camille of the New Testament Church of God for partaking in this event. The OECS Commission wishes nationals of Antigua and Barbuda a joyful Independence Day and further extends best wishes for the nation's continued peace, prosperity and progress. Happy Independence Antigua and Barbuda, I wish you all a blessed day.